Share Shootout brought to you by Line of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. Good evening and welcome to yet another Battle of the Stock Pickers. You're watching CNBC Africa and this is your Tuesday dose of share shootout. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, guests are jousting for glory and the honour of having the share shootout title. The stakes are higher than usual tonight. The stock picker with the most compelling argument wins himself a year's supply of paperclips. The least convincing stock picker has to buy those paperclips. I think that's fair <laughs> enough, okay? Um, don't uh, ever accuse us of being cheapskates here on Share Shootout. Next to me is our challenger, the pretender to the throne. His name is Francois Hubert. He's from FSP Hi, Invest. And just to reiterate, no one who's ever stand, stood in the middle has ever won Share Shootout. So, <laughs> Do you want to stop it now and you can just go? No, well, hopefully that changes today. Okay, well, hopefully <laughs> he does change today because against him is a man who's been here longer than some of our pieces of our elaborate sets, our furniture. He's, a, he's an old stick, is our third, as our guest this evening. Our third consecutive week of defending champion Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics. Our guests have, have you seen Mark Ingham's shoes, incidentally? Francois, would you, they're quite papal in their definition. I quite like you. I like your shoes. I think you're very <laughs> courageous, Mark. Uh, I guess of each bear prepick three shares, not one of which has got a market capitalization higher than 15 billion rand, which is a first for the show because it's nice small caps, really interesting companies, companies that have growth potential over the next 10 years, companies in which you might be able to make some money. So neither of them knows what the other holds and at some point in proceedings, they must each accept at least one of their competitor's stocks. So the longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept something that they really don't like. They've each got 30 seconds to argue their stock pick. We'll then interrogate their choice. We'll humiliate them. We'll poke fun at them. We'll criticize them and basically tear away their entire investment philosophy. And then the share either gets shot down or accepted. That is how share shootout is won. And what we maintain is the most vicious stock picking show on TV. Don't let, don't let me down, team. Vicious, <laughs> mean, nasty, personal. Don't criticize the shoes. Very sensitive about the cool. shoes. Mark Ingham, would you like to go first this evening? As you are the reigning champion, you are here for three weeks in a row. Let's start with something sweet, why don't we? Elovo. Yes, go on. A, a, a play that is not just a lump of sugar in a cup of tea. This is a play on sub-Saharan Africa, six countries uh, outside of SA2. Uh, they manufacture their own power, self-sufficient in power generation, and they export it. They also have add, added value products outside of sugar as, as well. So they have protection in their, in their home markets largely, and they have access, concessional access, to the EU because they're poor countries. Significant capital investment, good returns coming through for the next few years. Everybody loves Ilovo, but do you love it enough? Um, in, in a second, I'll, we'll interrogate this. I just want to ask a few questions in terms of preferential access to markets, because if you are growing sugar in places like Mozambique and Zambia and Malawi, the European Union is terribly nice about paying you more per pound, aren't they? Quite. And you also get very high yields, well over 100 tonnes per hectare, which is almost double what you get in South Africa. So that, combined with very competitive cash costs per pound, and preferential access, access, plus very good pricing domestically, gives you a winner. And what about control? Because they were sold out to Great British Foods or something. Uh, what was that? British Association of Food, yes. yes. They've got 51%. They've got yeah. They liked the company so much, they wanted to buy some of it. OK, <laughs> they liked it so much, they wanted it. Um, what was it? There was a payoff line like that many years ago. I liked the company so much, with I bought it. The, the razors. The yes. razors, yes. <laughs> it was such a good ad, but we don't remember which razors they were. It is uh, a long time ago. You're aging yourself. Um, Francois, what, what do you think of Elovid? Do you like it? Um, I, I think it's a nice company. I do prefer Tongat Hewlett above it. Why? Um, I think Tongat has had a bit better performance in the last few years. It also, in, in what I've seen thus far, um, Tongat's also gone a bit further with its um, sugar, sugar to energy strategy than uh, Elova has. Um, you do, s you do, however, say that Elova is generating. It claims to. Just Tongo, they just have better <laughs> PR. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well, well, uh, do or do they become an energy producer, a localized energy producer, for example? Will they ever have enough energy at Elova to feed into the national? They're doing that already out of Swaziland. Yeah, they are okay. exporting surplus power. Okay. okay, so that becomes another income stream <coughs> for them. Correct. And at the price that is In fact, last year it was ten percent of their of their uh, profits. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's very attractive. Can you, however, in any clear conscience? shoot it down? Well, uh, when you look at the market PE that's currently at roughly 16, I think, um, Elovo is on, on an 18 and a half, so you're already at a premium to the market. Tiny. The dividend yield is, is smaller than the market PE. True. 
um, still it's it's a 20% premium to the market. So you know the the growth potential on the share has to be significantly more, in, in my opinion, to justify buying it right now. Okay, it's on a multiple um, of two. It's on a dividend yield of two and a half times, 2.4 times, multiple of 18 and a half times. Does it grow? Does it grow faster than Tongart over the next five years to justify this high multiple? Well, for the year to uh, uh, March, you'll get 30% increase in earnings. Your dividend will go up to 85 cents, which makes those multiples uh, rather more attractive than the historic okay. trailing multiples which you're quoting. There we go. All right. <laughs> he, you see, he's, he's mean at this game. Yes, he's getting well that. practiced at this game. <laughs> are you going to shoot it down or are you going to accept it? Um, well, based, based on his case, it's, it's very difficult to shoot a down, so... Yeah, which, which is why uh, right. he's even going <laughs> red. He's going, oh my word, what yes. have I landed myself into this <laughs> evening? So, are you going to, are you accepting it? No, I'm accepting it. No, I'm <laughs> accepting it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. right, we're getting the translation coming through this evening. So, Ilobo Sugar gets the thumbs up. It seems like a reluctant thumbs up, but a thumbs up because he can't argue against it. Yeah. I, I look at your portfolio of picks and I commend your courage. Very adventurous. Eh? It's incredibly <laughs> adventurous, but that's what the show is all about. Yes. It is being about adventurous. It is about having courage and you get points for courage. <laughs> Let's see whether or not you get enough points, however, based on the fundamentals of your argument. For Calgro M3, now this is a, a residential property mm. developer. 30 seconds. Basically, Calgro develops property for the low and middle income income market. You're looking at 5,000 to 15,000 Rand. Um, that specific market is being subsidized by government, a subsidy of between uh, 10,000 and 85,000, depending on your income. Um, Calgary has got a confirmed project pipeline of roughly 7 billion rands. Um, that's for a company with a 500 million market cap, roughly. Um, they just released the sales announcement this week. Um, profits up between 30 and 50 percent. That's following last year's profit increase of nearly 300 yeah. percent. No, okay, st <laughs> stop there. Um, is Calgro one that you, you might ever consider? I think you've got a strong case um, in the sense that um, we're seeing a hybrid form of financing now also. You see it with Capitec. There's a lot of people who don't get access to conventional mortgage financing, but they fall into a particular bracket, which you're talking about. So I think in a very moribund market, this is probably one chink of light. And although there, are, um, th th there is a possibility of them stumbling, I've covered the construction industry for more years than I care to remember. <laughs> um, well, what, are, what are the risks? When you talk about them, them stumbling, here yeah, they've got government subsidies in place. There's an enormous need for affordable housing. There has been a shambles in the delivery of affordable yeah. housing over the last 20 years. Incredibly bad quality, um, incredible snagging in, in huge, where people have taken the mickey. But here you've got a listed player in this space. It's hard to shoot down. I agree, and I think uh, private companies tend to understand these uh, um, stumbling blocks. Uh, and uh, government is often more of the part of the problem than the actual sort of solution. So I think if you've got a committed uh, private player that understands its markets, that understands the problems, uh, but can play in an area which is subsidized and which is a, a, a certain amount of guarantee and a relative affordability, then there's no reason why uh, it should be shot down. How many, how many units are these guys building a year? Um, well, roughly for the next six years, they've got 26,500 units that they, they're planning to build. All right. Um, which is a mix of, of direct government subsidized houses and just a, a, a lower uh, a lower cost house, which is still roughly 200, 250,000. Okay, I the, the risk here is they get tempted to get greedy and start chasing, they, they start chasing growth, um, which is where construction companies always shoot themselves in the foot. But Mark Ingham, looking at Calgary, looking at it, it's not paying out a dividend, it's, it's cheap, it's trading a multiple of eight times. A tough one to shoot down? It, it's an option on the future. Yes. And for the right profile, if you understand that, uh, I'm prepared to accept it. Okay, awesome. That's very nice. We've been very <laughs> nice to you this evening, which is lovely. It's a, it's a nice change which, uh, from share shootout, which is usually is far more vicious. Um, but there's an opportunity for you to get vicious on this one, because as courageous as Calgro is, you're taking probably the newest listing on the JSE and saying, this is interesting. International company, footprint in South Africa, listed on the JSE December 2012, market cap of a billion rand. It's called Master Drilling. Tell me about it. It's a leader, worldwide leader in raised bore uh, drilling. It's a very specialist niche, largely underground mining to get places to go where it's difficult to explode, for instance. So it's a clean, it's a safe technology. They're number two in the market we're, we're worldwide. Um, a very uh, good mix of geography, not just Africa, but Latin America and Asia Pacific, and a fairly good income stream as well. Very good margins, and the technical skills are a very good barrier to entry. Why do I sort of, I'm running my tongue over my teeth. 
as you're speaking, I'm sort of feeling as if I'm in the dentist's chair talking about <laughs> master drilling. Yes. MDI, um, I didn't know anything about it until yesterday. 27 years it's been going. Yeah, and, and just l newly listed on the JSC. And a great South African success story. Yeah, mm. It reports in dollar income only. Yes, which is nice. About $100 million revenue, uh, about a 31% a gross margin. Um, and it's expanding, which is why it's listed. It raised 350 million rand. Um, and it's got a fairly committed technical team as well. Fairly um, committed or very committed? Uh, well, they've been with them many years. And the interesting thing is they've got a very good pipeline. If you extend beyond 2015, it's a, a, a well over $200 million pipeline of okay. committed contract now, work. Now, you're speaking his kind of language, because one of the points you made <laughs> when it came to Calgro yeah. was they've got the 7 billion rand work pipeline. Any business in the construction sector, and this is kind of construction related, they drill stuff, <laughs> um, uh, it shows my level of the, um, DIY knowledge. They, uh, any, that, that level of pipeline is a very attractive pipeline. Now, you trust pipelines, they're elastic <laughs> and flexible, but do you like master drilling? Um, not knowing the company, I just say that I think it might be a bit of an opportunistic time to list. Um, last year, while, while uh, mining stocks weren't yet that battered down, I mean, this year we've, we've been seeing a lot of mining stocks coming forward saying we will have to reduce our projects going forward. I mean, Billiton, Tinto, Vale, they're all reducing exploration. Just because the, the commodity market, they, they, I think they're expanding much too fast for, for the demand Interesting to grow. Interesting point. I mean, is there a uh, risk there for master drilling that their clients, the world's biggest mining companies, are slowing down their growth, their growth plans? Well, you're quite right about risk. But in fact, through from the global financial crisis, they've been growing earnings at 27% compound. The other thing, the, the, the crisis is a benefit to them because customers are so much more cautious. So this technology for existing mines, if, if customers Customers are not expanding their minds, they're not doing new exploration. The bulk of what they do, 67%, is in current up and running producing mines. And so therefore, it's a very powerful offering for customers who are slightly risk averse. Does it play to the theme of greater automation? It is. Okay, so it plays to the theme of greater automation. Every mining company you talk to in South Africa, and I know there's globally diverse here, but our deep level mines increasingly are automated. Come on, you're not going to shoot this <laughs> one down. No, I definitely would. Yeah, okay. uh, the, the, the <laughs> I know nothing about the company, <laughs> but I'm going to shoot it down. The, the mere fact that they listed while, while the, uh, the, the mining stocks are still at a high, um, and just as they, as they come down, as, as it becomes known to the whole market that, that things are slowing down, um, they definitely wouldn't get the same listing price today that they got last year, I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, so um, you're shooting it down. And I just believe there's, there's a bit too much risk in, in the exploration side of things there. All right then. Then, Mr. Big Mouth, yes. tell me why you think in the current environment in which we operate in South Africa, that investing in a coal miner is a good idea. Keaton well, Energy in 30 seconds. <laughs> Basically, Keaton Energy is a, is a listed miner. Um, they've got two operating mines. The one is Fangat Fontaine. Um, that does metallurgical coal and, and energy coal for ESCOM. And the other one is Falkrans. They do mainly metallurgical coal, but it's for a niche market in Brazil. Uh, iron ore pelletizing. Um, they've got fixed contracts for that. Also, they ran hedged um, on that. On the Funkhut Fontaine side, ESCOM needs the coal. ESCOM's, got, e ESCOM's even got contracts for, for coal going ahead five years from there. Um, they, the, the ESCOM coal price has increased from 230 to 300 rands in the last year. Okay, you're 30 seconds <laughs> up. I gave you a bit more time because yes. I was laughing at Fang Hat You know how to <laughs> translate that, don't you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ingham. Okay, so Keaton Energy, coal, a coal miner, market cap of 340 million rand Roughly. or thereabouts. It is got a negative, it's got negative earnings. Yes. It lost money last year. Um, but you see this is a good option on the future. Definitely. What do you make of this one, Mark Ingham? Goodness me. Um, <laughs> One of their rivals courageous. Uh, listed two years ago is now at 10% of its valuation then. And they had a far better story than, than this one, including solid thermal contracts, anthracite as well. And having been to the place, I know that it, it, it's got all the characteristics of, of good cash flow generation. Keaton, I'm fairly well acquainted with. I wouldn't touch it with a raised bore drilling rig. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, though? 
Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's in an area at the moment that I think is going to um, create a number of uh, challenges for them if it hasn't already. The market is quite jaundiced towards these mining juniors, and this is very junior when, when you get to that It market is very junior, level. but uh, excuse the pun, but when it comes to pricing power and Eskom, Eskom is whinging about the fact that it wants coal declared as strategic assets so Correct. that it can help determine the price of this. Is there really any regulatory risk on, on Keaton Energy? There is a huge regulatory risk, and th there's also a market pricing risk as well because they're, they're, they are price tech. They have no influence on the pricing of their product. They also can't particularly influence the cost levels up to a certain point. They have a high fixed capital cost. If you look at the P&L associated with a mining mm. company, um, it's got fairly high fixed costs. And therefore, in that environment where you could have downward pressure on, on ESCOM coal, uh, plus the fact that you're a cork bobbing on the uh, water with respect to coal pricing generally, it's not a place you want to be. Okay, and what about also the, from a Labour perspective, just last week Basically, we saw Shanduka Coal, yes. Sir Ramaphosa, who happens to be Deputy President of the ANC, pulling the plug on 250 jobs at, Sh at Shanduka Coal. Yes. That may be a positive signal for the coal mining industry because he has the Deputy President of the ANC drawing a line in the sand. Yes. And, and perhaps that's, that, that will, will illustrate to uh, workers within the coal sector that they need to up their game a bit. Um, you've got 10 seconds to convince me that Keaton is, is, is a good buy, otherwise he's shooting you down. Okay, basically Keaton is still selling at a, at a discount of 50% to NAV, so I believe that risk he's talking about is already priced in. Um, forward PE going forward uh, in the next year, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see 70 cents earnings per share. Okay. Um, but there's still going to be a, a few months of, of downside in it. Okay, all right. <laughs> but you're shooting it down. They're all priced at discounts. This is no exception. And okay. there's a good reason for that. <laughs> yes, shooting down. The claws <laughs> are out. But he doesn't need to shoot anybody down. He just scratches their eyes out. So, Francois Joubert um, has had his Calgro M3 cautiously accepted. And that is because, says Mark Ingham, it is an option on the future. Understand that it is risky. Understand that in an environment in which housing is in huge demand and where good government subsidies involved, that's all a good story. But we've seen these construction plays blow it and blow it big in the past as well. The construction sector, the big construction companies under a huge amount of pressure. Be cautious about it, but he's accepted Calgro M3. Keaton Energy, however, didn't get much airtime. It was brutally and viciously eliminated from the game. Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics, however, he got his Ilovo Sugar pick um, certified this evening, so Ilovo Sugar was not shot down. But Master Drilling, a new listing coming through in 2012, Roger says it's simply too high risk. It comes to the market in December. It wouldn't come to the market at the same price. Now, he doesn't believe that it is a sitter. He doesn't believe that the, he doesn't believe the story one little bit. So Master Drilling got shot down. We'll just take a short break and then we'll be back in a moment when the gloves are so very, very off because Mark Ingham, who is on his third round of victories, is hoping to be able to knock out Francois once again from the game this evening. And I think he's on a pretty good wicket. Francois is going to have to box really hard if he's going to come back from the obliteration of his second pick this evening, of course, which was Keaton Energy. He's coming back, though, with a far more convincing one in a moment. <laughs> 